Well, maybe we can. Oh, maybe we can start with a question and answers first. Like you ask me any questions. Yeah. You want to know anything about me? <laughs> ah. Okay. I'm 54. So are you. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Jessie from Masa Prima College. Uh, may I ask you, you say you're commercial film direct, commercial director, right? So how do you see the, I was called the selling point or something? Because like sometimes we can see the po uh, the commercial sell or something. So how do you can see it usually in your product that you have to do the commercial for? Normally the client tells us what the selling point is, right? right. What they should sell, I, I believe that, right? That's, that's you know, how, how we do it. Sometimes we don't disagree with them, you know, so then we argue and yeah, we come to a conclusion. So any, anybody else? So can you tell us which is your favorite uh, Petronas ad that you made? Mm. I think looking back, it would be the first Medeka commercial that we did, I think in 1996. Uh, it wasn't my favorite at first, but I think looking back after like 20, 30 years, right, it is, it's has become my favorite. I'll play it uh, later when we get sound, right, and uh, you can see that for the young who have not seen it, uh, yeah. I think it, uh, for many reasons I like it now. When I first saw it, I, I didn't like it. I, I was a pretentious art director. Uh, and we looked at a lot of reels from like all these award winners and you know DNAD and all and so so on and all these directors. And when I sh when we shot that film, I had something that I had in mind that I wanted to follow, right? Uh, we were young then and we were, you know, easily impressed by by all these award winning reel reels and we wanted to follow. And when Kamal Mustafa and he's a fantastic director shot it, it wasn't how I envisioned it. And uh, I envisioned it to be really stylish, like Louis Ng kind of stuff, black and white, nicely composed, right? But Kamal shot it in such a way that it was almost like uh, a Kurosawa movie or Satyajit Ray movie. It was really, you don't see the art direction. And at that time I flipped and I told Yasmin, I said, Shit is screwed up, you know, right? But she said, if you see it your way, you should direct it yourself, you know? So I said, oh, okay. But looking back now, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, you, you kind of, it lasted the test of time. And I think because of also the subject of it, the subject was, was very interesting. I'll talk about it later, right? And, uh, being the first to do it, you know, and things like that. I think it made a, it was very inclusive as well, that, that commercial. Are we solving the sound issue? We're still working on it. <coughs> all these young people here, what's your advice to all these fresh faces who wants to make it in advertising? Is the advertising different then and now? Yeah, I think it's very much different, you know. Uh, I can't really comment uh, because I left advertising maybe about eight years ago, right, from my agency and it's, it's probably changed a lot I, uh, with, uh, with social media and things like that. But I think it, some things remain the same. I think, you know, you guys need to ask a lot of questions, you know. Uh, not everything is right. I think you need to ask lots and lots of questions. I just ask your boss or your client and be inquisitive and try to find out as much as possible. Read as much as possible, get views from different, different people, different, different angles. Because, you know, uh, that's, where, that's how you learn, you know. And you just need to ask a lot of questions. Can you take us through the process of how you come up with like this? Like, what's the division? You said that Yasmin was your writer. Like, what does that mean? Did you come up with the idea or did she come up with the idea and how did it come together? 
normally we we would discuss about it right and sometimes we would uh discuss about it while we are showering together right and this is <laughs> yeah, too much here. information yeah, too much information <laughs> but yeah and and we would discuss about it and and you know and then say what angle should we take for let's say uh hari raya or merdeka or things like that but uh yeah and, and then you know sometimes i would write the script sometimes she would write the script right and we will show each other the script and you know uh you know her script was always better all the time right and you know so you know but we we do discuss the angles uh together what do we do for the next commercials you know yeah okay questions anyone yes hi my name is hema uh, <laughs> okay i'm from masa prima international college uh my question is what leads you to work in advertising industry oh, quick answer was the money la yeah i was i was working as a graphic designer and it it paid pittance i was earning like few hundred bucks without epf you know and after working day and night 20 you know late nights 18 hour days i this someone called me from the advertising agency and went for an interview and he kind of offered me like maybe more than 10 times the salary i was earning right So you that's oh shit I yeah why not <laughs> right and that's why I you know kind of yeah moved over to advertising from graphic design yeah have you been asked to do a commercial for something that you didn't agree with and what do you what do you do about it mm, I be, I believe in advertising I believe it can do good Are you there know? products that you won't advertise for? No. Uh Yeah. No. No cigarettes? Yeah, I do. I've done it. I've done cigarettes. Um Yeah. Does it ever do you ever have a conflict with yourself whether that's something you should promote? No. None none whatsoever. You know, it's it's a product. It's our job. I do it. I mean, and I enjoy doing it. Uh I believe that if advertising works well it has uh many benefits to society i b- i b- really believe that yeah yes maybe hi hi have you ever um come across a situation where you think you want to do something bigger um you want to sell a course or a, a story that forms around a course but the client is just so focused on selling the product so you think that the the product or the service is actually um can serve a strategic purpose unite malaysians for example um but the client doesn't see that there is that possibility and how if you, if there has been such uh situation how do you overcome how do you convince client to buy your idea I I do not believe that if if I can't sell it to the client uh means they are not ready to do it I would like the client I would only do it with a client especially for cost of value based advertising if they are not ready for it or they do not have the intention to do it I don't think I want to waste my time there if you know it just warm it blood you know So I think whatever you do I think from the client especially because it's brands who do this who pays for it right I believe that they have to have it in them uh with good intentions with in their marketing department or their their heads to want to do it I would not want to force them or try to sell them something they are not ready to do right for for patronas this uh what I'm going to talk about is they are willing to do it they have a right intention to to do what they do even till now we started doing this in 1996 or 1995 i can't remember but today they are still with it you know they are still advertising the festive commercials to corporate almost in the same direction maybe a little, little tweak here and there uh but they are in for a long haul it doesn't change overnight 
this kind of things, perception, you know, uh, making Malaysia better, takes a very, very long time. It doesn't mean that you do a commercial, that's it. it you, you have to spend decades doing it, I believe, you know. So I, 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 I don't believe in selling things to a client who, you know, who's not ready to do it. Hi, uh, my name is Jin On. I'm not a student, but I have to know. Um, what, are, what was one of the notable challenges you faced in shooting some of the uh, Petronas ads and how did you overcome it? Normally it would be time, right? Uh, for Petronas ads, uh, at that time, we had kind of ample bu budget uh, compared to today, right? So, you know, even then, you know, it would be time and things like that. Mostly it's time because we are always chasing the weather and, you know, uh, how the production works is we, we basically uh, pay for by day, you know. So we have two days shoot. That means we have to finish it in two days and, you know, if there's a lot of, uh, like, morning scenes or, or daylight scenes, then we are chasing time, you know. The time goes down, yeah. Yeah, I, I think you need to help me with this uh, talk here. So you have to ask a lot of questions while we fix this sound issue. I think maybe it will be more interesting with questions than my boring talk, you know. Hi, you hear me all right? Uh, where are you? Ah, okay. I mean, maybe you would have uh, covered it in the, in the talk eventually, but um, I guess the, the big question I have is uh, how do you reconcile doing good with selling products when oftentimes for-profits don't necessarily do the best thing for society. I think that's what most of us are probably are here to, to sort of hear from you from. I think, uh, like I said, it's a tough uh, question to answer. Uh, but for this, this case, is, uh, the, most of the commercials I do, I mean, my, in my career, I've worked with many, many clients and Petronas is the only client that basically have allowed us to, to uh, advertise, to, to, to do this uh, Malaysian thing, you know, that, that uh, value-based kind of commercials. The uh, rest of the clients are basically, we just, we, we do sell uh, the products uh, and we try to, not to, you know, uh, paint too much of a negative uh, aspiration or unattainable as aspirations that you know a lot of you know ads do you know especially like perfection uh, photoshop perfection you know right uh, and that's sometimes like for especially for women like you know beauty products and things like that right uh, at the end of the day it it's uh, pos it's not attainable you know some some things like that so I think uh, over the years, a lot of brands have, especially since the social media uh, era has come about, I think they ha have gone onto this value-based kind of advertising, which at the end of the day, it still has to sell products. At the end of the day, you, people have to see it, they have to click on it and sh share it around. But, uh, you know, that's a, some a question that we constantly need to ask ourselves, you know. Yeah, I don't know whether I answered your question, but, you know, yeah. Yu Leong, what would be your dream project? Sorry? Dream project. Something that you are even happy not to be paid for. What would be something you want to do? I like to shoot photo. I like to do photojournalism, right? Uh, you know, if someone wants to shoot something that's interesting, I would do it. I mean, like you know, uh, document some you know interesting uh, lifestyle, for instance, or or people, you know. Right? I like to do that. Uh, yeah, and that's part of the reasons why I am, you know, shooting for Munching for Asia Foundation. Because uh, at first when she approached me, I said, I, I don't want to do graphic design because you know, I'm not a designer anymore. You know, I haven't done design for like 10 years. You know, she wanted me to help her with some design. But I, I told her I don't mind doing photography. I can introduce you to some designers like Gigi and all uh, to do those designs. But I'm not, not interested in doing uh, graphic design uh, and also video. 
but she somehow managed to convince me uh, to do it, and so I started shooting for her. And I also found it very interesting what she do, what what she's doing now with Asian Foundation, and that's why I, I you know, do it for her. Uh, yeah, the places that we go to are interesting. The people that we meet is interesting. I can shoot some interesting pictures. Of course, there's there's a personal agenda. There will always be a personal agenda when when we do such things, whether it's personal or whatever, right? And for me, it's getting to meet people that I probably would not meet if you know I don't take on this job, like going up to northern Thailand to meet some coffee farmer that reforests the hills so that he can he who plants coffees. So that he can reforest the hills. No, shade, shaded, covered. Ah, we have sound. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank God. Damn. Sorry about that. Little glitch, but the wait will be worth it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, okay. never mind. The tech boys are at work. So, yeah. yes, you were oh, saying. Yeah. Shooting, uh, yeah, if anyone down here wants, yeah, I'll do it for free. Okay, I'll yeah. pitch you a project. Let's do something on Telo Intan. I'm from Telo Intan. I know, I'm from yeah. Telo Intan. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, any other questions? We probably need one more. Oh, yeah, you again. One more before we should be able to start properly. Okay, my, my final question, which I've been really budding to ask you is, um, with, with digital budgets oftentimes being much smaller to produce uh, a piece of content than you know, it would be conventional advertising, uh, you, sort of, you, you and Yasmin, I guess, have sort of created a, a winning formula, you know, you know, sort of like using nostalgia and, and uh, a co common you know, human Malaysian sort of spirit that's been replicated uh, quite, quite a bit since your time, especially with, with YouTubers. Uh, you think of like you know Ming things and uh, you know Grim films and Genie Boys. This is sort of the the same positioning you've taken like 20, 30 years ago. Sort of replicated again and again and again. Um, I'm just curious how you uh, see uh, the landscape of, of of Malaysian advertising today, uh, and uh, with this tendency to then just replicate previously uh, sort of successful formulas uh, with smaller budgets. Um, I guess it's a two-pronged question. Like, one, how do you convince more people to be like, uh, assuming your, your model is correct, uh, to be more like Petronas? Uh, and two, how do you get people to uh, not just uh, replicate things that have already been previously successful? So there's this element of risk-taking, obviously, and to convince a client to be more risky. So I guess that's the, that's the question. Yeah, I, I see a lot of... Uh Things, and I, like, that's why I told Manching when I saw this year's all the Medica commercials and her festive commercials and I said everybody is doing the same thing uh, I think I can't remember anything to be honest right uh, at that time when we did it when we started our, our Petras commercials nobody was doing uh, storytelling nobody was doing Medica ads we were always the f we were the first and the, the issues and the the stories that we told was also the first, right? And 20, 25 years later, people are still doing the same thing. And I told Manching, I wouldn't, if I was in the agency, I wouldn't be doing patronas like commercials or videos, what do you call it, right? Oh, you've got to think of something else, and that's why we get paid to do. As uh, I assume you're in an agency or some. Something like that, no? Right, but uh, that's our job, to think of something different, to, to explore and sell to the client. Maybe it will work, maybe it doesn't. Uh, there's great risk involved. Where there's great risk involved, there's great rewards. And when you kind of are lucky enough to get the rewards, then, uh, yeah, then you do something new, right? Something that will, people will remember. But right now, for me, it's, it's the same things. And I, everybody is doing the same thing. If, if everybody is doing videos, maybe I wouldn't do a video. Why be in that space in the first place? I know, you do something else, right? So that's up to the agencies and the client to 
to you know explore lah. You know? Okay, it's working now. Oh God, Pete is here. Damn. <laughs> Okay, Technical hitch, I solved it for you, for you already, so you, you, you should be fine. Hey? Okay guys, it seems that you need two computers to... So that so is how uh, we see Malaysia. I mean, me and Yasmin. <coughs> next, yeah. A Malaysia scene. Next. Oh, I can press. Okay. A Malaysia scene through the eyes of love, yeah? And a Malaysia that is for all Malaysians. Uh, for me and Yasmin, I think a Malaysia where uh, into marriage is common right and you know there's no all this negativity that we we find today but it's th this is all rose tinted you know? this is what we want this is our aspiration right and it's some people say it's naive yeah and you know maybe it is maybe it's not but this is what uh we see so uh when when Petronas came to see us back in 1996, they came to us not with the title of the topic, how to make Malaysia better through advertising. No, they didn't come to us with that. They came to us because they were seen as a very Malay company. Yeah? And at this time, they were expanding their stations. I think that at that time that maybe they had 400 over stations and they're going to expand it to maybe 700 over stations and uh, and they were seen as governmental the government company Malay and all that so what they wanted to do was to make them be seen as more Malaysian yeah and so they came to us this was their brief to us they wanted to be a more Malaysian company yeah and so uh, we thought yeah okay we will We'll do some Malaysian stories. Uh, you know, the best way is to do Malaysian stories. And at this time, there were most of the advertising were just fast cuts, and they just sell products, and there's not much of a story, right? At that time, 1996, right? So um, we said Malaysian stories is kind of white right now. You know, which angle? It's it's a huge area to play in Malaysian stories. But of course, we are not smart enough to came up with a solution there and then. So we said, ah, never mind, la. we just do it first and see where it takes us, la, right? So we came up with a, f a, first, uh, a couple of first uh, few commercials that we did. It was a festive commercial. I'm not going to show it that, that, that here. And the next one we did was a Medica commercial. And I'm going to play this to you. And these first few commercials kind of set us in a direction uh, to cover Malaysian stories that is, you know, based on you know, issues that we face as a country. Right at this point, when they came to us, we had no clue 
what we're going to do, okay, Malaysian stories, so okay, we're just going to write some scripts and see where it takes us, yeah? So I'm going to play you this commercial. Yeah. I can't click, right? Can I click? Oh, I can click, okay. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I, we didn't expect that, that this first few commercials started uh, conversations between Malaysians. That at that time, there was no social media or anything like that, right? It was just people talking in a coffee shop, you know, newspaper giving a nice review and articles about it. So that, that was about it, right? I was just a little boy then, but I remember it all clearly. Father said I was getting heavier. Everyone was fussing over me, so I knew it was a special occasion. We were going somewhere. I saw him. He was very far away, yet I could hear every word he said. Many things have changed since. My dear father is gone now. And today, although we are much better off than we were before, sometimes we forget how it all started, but I know I know that it was a very special day. So, so uh, that was the super set. It was 2000, but th this was a rerun. So we, we, this commercial ran in 1996. Uh, it is the first uh, ever Medeca ad being done ever. I think, Tony, you were running the Petron's account, right? So correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the first Merdeka ad ever being done in this country. Uh, it had many firsts, yeah? It's also 90 seconds long. <coughs> to buy media for 90 seconds, now, now for the young people, 90 seconds is nothing. Lah. They do videos that is 8 minutes long or 10 minutes long. You know? So 90 seconds at that time, it, it, to run on TV stations will cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know? Right, and uh, so that was that, and it's also uh, in black and white, you know. I don't, at that time there were a lot of color commercials, but I don't remember seeing the whole commercial being in black and white. The other thing is, another first is, is it featured a minority. It featured an Indian father and his son. Up to this point in, uh, in advertising, you hardly find or you find no Indians being featured as main characters in commercials. You know, none whatsoever. We always get, I think you still get it now, pan-Asian looking people, you know, that appeal to all races or Malay looking people or Chinese looking people. But, you know, seldom do you put your hero as, you know, a minority playing the hero. And I remember that when we presented this script for an internal review, there were objections, right, uh, from, from a few people that, no, maybe we should change the character to a Malay father and his son. And of course, we said, you know, uh, if Petronas wants to be seen as Malaysian, they should, the thing we should stay away is to you know, put a Malay uh, father. A very lo simple, logical question, uh, you know, solution down there. And of course, it, we, the discussion went on, blah, blah, blah. And then Yasmin, being Yasmin, uh, the stubborn cow that she is, and the prima donna that she is at that time, she said, 
you know, if you take, if we don't use an Indian father and his son, I won't present this script. You guys can write the script. And that shut everybody up, lah. Right? So he said, okay, uh, okay. Right? And so we had our Indian boy and his father. And she was very cheeky as well. She, at that time, there's no title to this script, you know. And suddenly she had a title already, right? After this whole discussion, she was firstly trying to chucho everybody. Lah. And the title of this film is called One Little Indian Boy, you know? Like, so it's really up there, right? Just to chucho all the people who said, no, no, you can't you know, have uh, you know, Indian, you know, as a, in a commercial. So it, it kind of ran, and I think one of the things, key lessons down here would be I think, you know, inclusive uh, picture of society, being inclusive is very important, especially if you want to do things like, like this, you know, value kind of based kind of advertising. Yeah, uh, so, so that's that. Uh, so that's with, with this commercial. I'll just play you the next one. Oh, no, yeah, forgot. When we went to see the client, right, they, we presented to the client and they, they asked the same question and we told them why we didn't use the Melee Man and uh, they were okay with it, not much of a resistance there. And after we shot it, right, it was received very well, you know, by the press and all that. But they received a few emails, right? At that time, there was no Facebook and all the things like that. They got some emails and, you know, being clients, they got a bit spooked by it, you know. You know, people asking why wasn't it a uh, Malay father and things like that. So, and then we say, come down, come down. You know, it's okay, no, no problems, you know. And uh, we couldn't reply immediately. The next year, we sold a client the, the ad, an ad that basically replied all these skeptics, okay. And it goes something like that. It's a picture of this uh, boy and his father. And it has a tight, the headline that says, do you see an Indian? We see a Malaysian, right? We presented this and it was an ad that came out the next year. We could only reply them one year later, not like instant, you know? So that, this was the ad that ran uh, the following year for Madeka. And I have to commend the client for their bravery, yeah, yeah to, to do something like this, especially from a government-owned company. Yeah. Oh yeah, do you see anything wrong with this picture? This scene. Do you see anything wrong with this scene? Anyone? Huh? Eh? Sorry? Yeah. No Chinese, huh? We got emails. The client got emails that there was no Chinese in here. I think when you do something that is inclusive, right? People want to be in it. They want to be part of it, right? And we got emails like this and uh, we made a mistake here. We forgot to put the Chinese people in there because we were rushing and we were putting all the extras behind, blah, blah, blah. And we kind of missed it that there were no Chinese in this scene. And, and then when, when, the, when the emails came, hey, there was Chinese in the commercial, but there's the, uh, the aso there by going to, to buy vegetables in the beginning. Then we found out that, hey, it was this scene that uh, they were complaining about. There was no Chinese in here, you know? So, yeah. So next commercial. I was too young to know what the panic was all about. Papa called from Sabah and told us to leave quickly. Then, our neighbours told Mama we would be safe at their house. If it was the other way around, 
we would have done the same for them. This year, two worlds come closer. But for some, the two worlds will never apart. So this was uh, the, another commercial, I think, that kind of set us on where we, we the direction that we headed. Uh, I think it's, it was a, for a Kung Si Raya commercial that, that we did. And basically, it told a story of May 13, you know, right? And up until this point, there were no public discussion or public uh, write up even in the newspaper about this incident. Nobody discussed about it, let, let alone a commercial like this. And I remember there was only one, uh, there was a painting done by Ibrahim Hussein where he painted the flag black and it was hung in the National Museum. And that was the only thing I remember about, you know, something public about May 13. And this commercial was the first that, uh, that ran about May 13th. I think it's the only one until now, you know, nobody spoke about it. But of course, it's a, kind of a taboo subject, you know, and nobody dared to touch it. Uh, so we had a problem when we, two problems actually, when we presented this script. One was selling it to the client, something that as bold as this. And second was to get past RTM. RTM is a censorship board. And for the young people who just upload YouTube, you don't need to go through a censorship. But for television commercials, you need to go through a censorship board. And we were worried that they, this, this commercial might not go on air. But somehow, we, we cannot mention uh, May 13 and all that. So that's hence the story is all about, you know, something is happening and all that. This is Im implied uh, uh, trouble happening in Malaysia. And if you look properly in the commercial, there is a date on the calendar and it says 15. Right, and so to get away from RTM, so they kind of missed it, I suppose. They allowed the commercial to play. And the best part was the client. When we presented this to the client and uh, the boss, the, I know the CEO or managing director, his name is Tansri Hassan. He is one of the imminent councils of elders or whatever they call it, right? And he was running Petronas at that time and he was a very brave, and visionary man and he saw the script and he said hmm okay let me sleep on it for two days right so so we went back and says no way this guy's gonna approve the script lah you know so then he called us back on a friday i remember it very clearly it was on a friday and he called us back before friday prayers and he we came into the room and he said yeah okay guys go and shoot this i'll do anything once right he just told it yeah, so, okay, we, we get to shoot this. Yay, right? And hence, this is... Uh, these are the two commercials. Uh, one Little Indian Boy, and this one is called Leanne's Best Friend. Uh, kind of set the direction of where we want to take all these Malaysian stories to. Yeah? Uh, yeah. And it's also a story about love and not about the violence. And I think that in that turbulent, turbulent times, there were a lot of... Uh, violence and all that but there's also a lot of love and we kind of chose to tell a, a positive story about love rather than the violence so you know hence you know it it was a hit as well and people discussed about it and started conversations and i think a positive message is always for me anyway it's uh it's kind of you know appealing it works right it's better than a negative one i i, I suppose so it kind of like, yeah, Malaysian stories that highlight social issues we face as a country. And, you know, from these two commercials, you know, we kind of got, ah, maybe we should do, go, go along this way, yeah? And, you know, hence, for the last 16 years that I did the commercials, the Paris commercials, it was always along those lines about Malaysian is the issues that we face as a country. Yeah. Some of them was a little bit preachy with the headline and all that, and, you know, I... You know, on hindsight, it was like, oh, okay, maybe we shouldn't have done that, but... <laughs> uh, so I'll play you another commercial. Uh, this is... Uh, I know it's not that popular, but I kind of like it uh, for the message and for the direction as well.
Saya dah tak larat nak buat sampan tu tadi Habis tu kamu nak buat apa? Mana? Saya nak jadi jaga dekat Ipoh Jaga? <laughs> Nanti kena man Hutang saya dengan Tuan Haji banyak Tapi tak apa, nanti saya bayarlah Gini lah man Ni Kamu buatkan aku satu sampai Seropa, sebijik rupa ni Kayu, papan, paku Kamu datanglah sini kedai ni, ambil saja Janji kamu siap benda ni Hutang kamu, aku kira selesai Minatlah dengan sampan Kamu ambil lah yang jin dengan sampan ni takut Ya betul tuan ni Aku kena ada tongkat Nak ngangkut pasir, simen Projek besar aku kat hulu tu dah mula Mana saja duit nak bayar tuan haji Bayar-bayar Ini hadiah kawan lama Ada masa kita pergi lah manja Ini kawan lama punya Sekejap lagi semua orang nak sewa sampan Kamu tentu boleh cari makan Sekarang kamu dah bebas man Tak payah bergantung pada siapa-siapa like this for i mean we we guys uh, Malaysians we like to do take we like to take shortcuts you know I'm like doing stuff you know taking a shortcut and and at the end of the day i like the message of it maybe on hindsight you know maybe it's a little bit preachy but heck you know maybe without the line it would be better right and of course the client insisted on the line there that's that says everything but yeah uh, Where's the sound guy? Do I? Yeah, the sound guy <laughs> needs to control two computers to get me sound. Yeah, I, I like this one. Yeah, just have a look at this.
this story is not about winning or losing. It's about the importance of staying united. The, it's, this commercial was done, oh, I think during the reform, a year or two after the reform RC period, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and there was this Camp A and Camp B issue with Amno and all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, it was really brave for the client to approve this one, you know, right? Uh, during that time. And it's not my... F it was uh, the last commercial that I directed with Yasmin. After this, I never directed a commercial with her anymore because we fought so much uh, during this shoot and like I wanted to just strangle her and she wanted to kill me and throw me in the lake, right? Uh, over little, little things and, which I can't remember right now. Uh, yeah, and it's not one of our most popular commercials. And I remember Rayman Rashid, the late Rayman Rashid. Uh, maybe some of you guys don't know who he is, but, but young ones might not know who he is. He's written three books on Malaysia and he's one guy who writes beautifully and about Malaysia. All his three books was about Malaysia. One is called Malaysia. For young one, you should read it. Right? The other one, the second one he came, uh, was just published like maybe a couple of years ago. It's called Peninsula. And he did one on KKB as well. Uh, he, he used to come to the office and have discussions with us. And he hates this commercial. It, he, he thinks it's juvenile, it is childish, it is the hair versus the tortoise story and you have this laugh at the midget joke, right? And, uh, you know, he just hated it, you know, and he said, you know, uh, how could you guys do this crap, you know, right? And, uh, and he had different views. He's, he was a journalist. I think one of the finest journalists we have ever had in, in this country, writing-wise. Uh, and he would have conversations like this with Yasmin. It goes something like this, right? But Yasmin, this doesn't happen. But Yasmin say, but it could. And he's, he says, but it doesn't, right? And Yasmin will answer, but it should. And this basically, this conversation, four lines of conversation, basically, you know, you can see where they were. Yasmin was the eternal, with, full with eternal hope. And uh, Rayman, I would say, you know, full with uh, eternal tragedy. He, but he loved Malaysia. You know, get, don't get me wrong, he loved Malaysia in his own way and he wrote beautifully about the country. And every time I read his books about Malaysia, it, you know, it, you know, it makes me feel so sabar, you know, I feel like crying at some parts. And so, so that, I wanted to show this commercial because, yeah, you know, it brings a lot of memories when we were, shoot, we were shooting this with, with Yasmin and, you know, the fights that we had, you know, on set, right? Oh, this one, yeah. Oh, okay. You need to... Oh, sorry. How do you spell dinosaur? Okay, D-I-N-O-S-A-R-U. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. <laughs> okay, Sharon. Okay. How do you spell dinosaur? D-I-N-O-S-O-R-E. Dinosaur. 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 Race, that means race car. Race, I forget what's the race. The race is race car. Race. Race. I think from this commercial, you know our education sucks, you know. You can't spell dinosaur, so tough, man. <laughs> so another one. I think I would end with this. Uh, you know, I think every, most people have seen this one. Oops.
Wow, you need to sync it. My name is Omi. Omi Gazrina. I like her. Uh, why do you like her? She wears earrings, she ties her ponytail. Um, she's pretty. Uh, what do you wish you could say to her? Do you want to come on a date? Uh, to a romantic dinner. And um, does she know you like her? No, I keep it a secret. Why? I don't want the whole world to know. Why not? Because everybody will laugh at me. What, why should they laugh at you? Huh? Why should they laugh at you? She doesn't like me. She doesn't like you? My name is Umi Gajudina. Who's your best friend? Han Hong Ming? Do you like him? Do you have a boyfriend? Who's your boyfriend? Han Hong Ming. So I tell a little background on, on this series of commercials. Uh, it wouldn't have happened if our original project went on air. Right? Our original project was the feature film. We wanted to shoot a feature film for Petronas. At this time, we have done like maybe six, I can't remember how many commercials, but it was many years, more than 10 years, or maybe 12 years, more than 12 years. Right, so we told, we told, hey, let's do something different, right? People have accepted our, our ads have not, uh, be, have become more than ads, right? They became kind of entertainment. Let's go and shoot a feature film. So we proposed a feature film, and the story was kind of cool, a synopsis anyway, right? And uh, basically, it's about these three boys. Of course, it's, uh, you know, Mutu, Ali, and Achong, right? Who, who's, who are orphans, and they live. Uh, in, I think, Taiping or somewhere, often in Taiping, run by a British nun. And they are all in 1957, and they, they want to go to see the parade in Stadium Medica by, by Tunku. So basically, it's a road trip that they take uh, to Kuala Lumpur. And along the road trip, they would meet a communist who come out from the jungle and who wanted to eat chicken rice. You know? So the, the communist was so hungry, and he wanted to go to eat chicken rice, and there was communist. You know, so basically it's that. And we had all these plans, how big it was. We could do a reality casting for the kids. You know, you know, we could do it throughout the country. We could show it at a premiere and things like that. So it was a huge, huge program uh, that we wanted to do for them because it was, I think, the 57 years of Medeka, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, and then we presented to Tan Sri Hassan again. And he said, let me sleep on it, right? So he went back and he slept on it and he came back and he said no. So it's like, I was so disappointed, right? Uh, and, uh, but Yasmin, the eternal, you know, optimist person was not. And she would always say, uh, God knows best, right? And so, that, that, and then Tan Sri Hassan said, uh, okay, you can go and do three commercials or how many commercials you want. You know, just do it, you know, because it's 57 years. So, and then, of course, we are running short of time and we decided, hey, let's do this, uh, what you guys call a social experiment lah. now. At that time, I don't know what the hell is, we, we just call, call it like, oh, let's get a bunch of boy, uh, kids and ask them some questions, you know. Now, now it's a social experiment, right, Elvin? Right. And so, I can't, we can't take credit for these commercials and I think everything is... Uh, given to us by God, right? Because firstly, uh, Hassan rejected our script. And then when I casted this boy, Yasmin was not around. She went to some film festival. I had to do the casting, right? And there's so many kids. And I saw this boy who looks kind of, you know, odd but cute with big ears. And I 
wanted to talk to him. Through the whole casting, he didn't say a single word. So I was thinking, I think I better throw, not put him in, lah, right? But somehow then I thought, oh, okay, never mind, he got big ears, I got big ears, okay, let's put him in, right? So uh, we put him in, and on that day, he decided to tell his whole life story lah, on camera, right? On day before, no, didn't want to speak a word, you know. So it's like, we won't get anything out of him. But on that day, he told everything. And you see this scene here, down the corridor? When we were shooting uh, him, before we started shoot, we placed our camera and said, okay, we're going to shoot him here, right? And the sound man said, no, no, no. This is too noisy here. There's too many kids, right? I don't want to shoot it here. Let's take him under the tree, like, you know, five, six hundred meters away from the classroom, you know, under the tree because it's quiet. So then my cameraman, Kyong, no, no, I like this corridor, right? If we have changed the location, he, she, he might not have gone back into the classroom to get this girl out. And then we have no story, right? So, so like I said, everything just kind of happened and like got, like Yasmin said, God knows best, you know, and you know, cameraman didn't want to move his camera. Some man wants to take it over the other side. And the guy who doesn't want to speak wants to tell his life story, you know. And so we have this commercial. And uh, yeah, I think... Uh, at the end, human stories, you know, told from the bottom of your heart, you know, normally will reach, you know, people at the bottom of their hearts. You know, I think this story, you know, and this is universal. I think everywhere, you know, people love this show, this commercial, and they kind of enjoyed it. And yeah, Tan Hong Ming was now grown up, yeah. So yeah, I mean, can advertising make for better Malaysia? I not really sure, maybe it can, but I think definitely it cannot be the pioneer in instigating change, right? I think it can only be a fan in flam fl uh, fanning this flame that, you know, society and the you know, culture has, you know, started, yeah? It, I don't think advertising can start anything, change, but we can help it along. And one more thing is for people, for students or for agencies or brands who, even media people, who want to do something for Malaysia, I think uh, for something good for Malaysia, I think we need to ask this question. I think uh, this question is this. No, sorry, wrong slide. This question is this, right? Who are we, who aren't we listening to today in this beloved country of ours? Right? I think we get a lot of news about the liberals or the lefties, and we get a lot of views uh, from the right. Yeah? In between, in between, you know, there is this grey area where a lot of people has no voice or we haven't listened to them. We need to, to ask them, who, who are these people? They have issues, you know. They have, we can start conversations with them, right? So basically, uh, yeah. Uh, this is a question that, you know, uh, you guys need to ask, I, I believe, personally. And you can find new angles in how we can make Malaysia better. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much. And